Hey everyone, my name is Randy Lee and I'm an environmental engineer. In this video, I'll be going over what I believe to be the best colleges to major in environmental engineering for the year 2022. But before I begin, I want to start off with a little disclaimer. So I've been putting off this topic for a while now, even though it's been like a highly requested topic. Lots of people from the United States and from other parts of the world, they wanted to know and ask me about it since, you know, I graduated with an environmental engineering degree. There are many reasons why I didn't want to talk about it, mostly because I didn't want to be held accountable for any unforeseen failures, difficulties, or situations that you may encounter. So for example, if you decide to go to one of these colleges that I'm gonna recommend, and the tuition costs too much, just don't blame me. Look into your own financial situations before you go all in, especially if you're like out of state or not from the United States. Next, for example, if you fail to graduate, don't blame me. Look into your own life-specific situation before you go all in and commit to these two to six years worth of education. Or lastly, if you get into one of these colleges, but decide to switch majors halfway through, or maybe you quit, or you can't find a job after you graduate, don't blame me. I don't control the universe or the job market. I'm only recommending these schools, not forcing you to go to them. Also, I'm not affiliated with any of these schools. They didn't reach out to me or like sponsor me or anything. I'm not promoting them so I can get paid. Honestly, I wasn't even good enough to get to some of these myself when I applied, so I had nothing to gain from this. Also, I already graduated. I just went out and did my due diligence by researching and compiling a list for you. So I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video so more people can see it since YouTube ranks based on like what's popular. And with that being said, now let's get started into the video. The first on my list is MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Look at that. I'm already starting off the list with a highly prestigious and impossibly difficult college to get into. The acceptance rate to MIT is about 7%, but for a good reason. It is known worldwide for being particularly innovative in science and technology. Since environmental engineering is under the whole STEM umbrella, it is no wonder that MIT is my number one pick. Not only do I have to be above average in my general subjects before going in, like English, history, and the arts, but you also have to be exceptionally well in sciences like physics, chemistry, and biology. Just know that admissions is only half the battle because you have to prove yourself to competent engineer amongst your peers once you're actually in. Being the lead in technology, their Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering seeks to change the world through innovation and creative design. And that's just straight from the website. I just thought I'd bring it up because it sounds really cheesy. Next on our list are the Ivy League schools. These highly prestigious schools include Brown University, Columbia University, Cornell University, Dartmouth College, Harvard University, Princeton University, University of Pennsylvania, and Yale University. I'm just gonna lump them together because, let's be honest, they're all equally difficult to get into. The average acceptance rate to get into one of these schools is about 5%, even lower than MIT. I know, right? How's that even possible? I am generalizing and not picking any one specific university out of these whole Ivy League schools because I guarantee any one of these schools on these lists is worthwhile. Third on the list is California Institute of Technology. You know, I gotta give some love to my state. The admissions rate is about 3.9% and was ranked by CBS News as the third hardest college to get into. Admissions into this university is just as difficult as all the others recommended on this list. Students enrolled in the environmental engineering department receive a broad education and carry out research addressing some of the grand science and engineering challenges of our current time. So you can bet that you'll be doing some heavy research into tackling sustainability and climate issues. Fourth on my list is the Military Academy West Point. Since you're watching this video, this video is what I would recommend, meaning this list will include my own opinion and biases. Therefore, I am biased when it comes to favoring things that have something to do with the military. So I'm including this military academy because I've always wanted to go there when I was in high school, also because I worked as an environmental engineer for the Air Force. And although this is on the recommended list, a military academy and the military lifestyle is not for everyone. Some people who aren't physically capable or just are interested in the military can skip this, but I thought I'd mention it anyway just to not completely ignore the possibility of enrolling into a program that involves the military. Tuition is completely free, but there are still really restrict requirements. Admissions is just as tough, so don't think that just because it's free and part of the military that it's easy to get into or that like, you know, they're begging people to get into. The admissions rate is about 9%. Not only do they have an environmental engineering department here, but you'll also have the opportunity to serve your country during college and after graduating. So if you're concerned about finding a job after graduating or just don't know what to do, you probably won't have to worry about that if you graduate from here because, well, you'll be forced to serve after graduating. 
Fifth on the list are University of California schools. Again, I'm showing some biased love for my state and for one of the universities that I attended for my education. If you didn't already know, I attended UC Riverside for my Bachelor's of Chemistry and at UC Irvine for my Master's in Environmental Engineering. The UC schools include Berkeley, Davis, Irvine, Los Angeles, Merced, Riverside, San Diego, San Francisco, Santa Barbara, and Santa Cruz. The UC school systems are well known because they have numerous research centers, publish multiple papers in highly prestigious research journals, and have a large number of faculty who actually won Nobel Prizes. And six of the UC schools are considered public IVs, which is just a term used for public universities that, quote, provide a collegiate experience similar to those in the Ivy League. Basically, if you weren't good enough to get into an Ivy League school, but you still want something that closely resembles it, join a UC school. Lastly are state colleges. So if you have no idea what school is good, just check the state. For example, let's just pick some random state. Say you want to live in Wisconsin. Wisconsin has some universities, right? But which one is good? Out of all the colleges in Wisconsin, you can quite literally just choose the University of Wisconsin. What? You live in California? Then maybe just check out the University of California. Or maybe you live in Washington. Check out the University of Washington. It's that easy. I'm recommending these general universities because they're the largest and most well-known for that specific state. I mean, you don't want to go to a college that only has a few people and little programs in it. They probably aren't that well-known or even accredited. So choosing something as obvious as the University of, you know, insert state name here, makes it really easy to look into. We previously mentioned that University of California is another example of these state colleges, but since there are like nine or 10 of them, it had to be in its own separate category. The advantages of going to a state college is that it's usually much cheaper compared to like a private university, especially if you already live in that state. The state sort of incentivizes students to stay in their home state rather than go out to a different state and pay over there. It's good for both the students and the state because like the state gets some revenue and you as a student, you don't really have to move as much and spend more on traveling. And that's it for my list of best colleges to major in environmental engineering for the year 2022. I know this is like way past overdue, but at least it's out there right now. So let me know what you guys think about these colleges. You know, if you applied and got accepted into them or maybe you think that you have no chance of getting into them at all. That's it for the video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.